Looks like I picked the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. Welcome to Off Grid Oregon. Today we're going to make some PVC flat stock out of a big PVC pipe. And then for fun, we're going to make a pulley out of that. Let's see how good this pulley works. And let's see what breaks. Please subscribe. It wasn't the pulley that broke. It was my tiny bit of construction twine that just had one granny knot in it. Who'd have thunk? In the video, you're going to see some of the PVC getting a little burnt and crispy. I think if you do it, you know, if you have the equipment at home, use a real oven, not a funky little camping stove oven that I have, and use a heat gun instead of a blowtorch. And uh, I think your stuff will come out pure white, real nice. I want to make pulleys that are two inches wide. So I'm going to cut off a, a three inch strip here. And, you know, you could make like a perfect mark and do it all perfectly. And you could do, who knows, two and an eighth or something. But if I do three inches, then I should have plenty. And I'll just use a sawzall. Uh, hopefully it goes well. Let's see. Probably should have made a slit in this uh, while well, I had it on the whole pipe, but here we go. Okay, this is my little uh, portable oven that I got from a garage sale. You can see right now, it's about two, it's a bit over 200. Uh, we're gonna see what it takes to melt this. I burned it last time. I think I was going at like 350. That's too high. So I'm going to see if maybe if I can keep this thing at 250, 275. I'm just going to put my piece of PVC in. Something to mention is that I put the seam where I cut it at the top. So you can kind of, you know, so it separates correctly. All right, it's been five minutes at about 250, a little lower. You can see it's starting to uh, get flexible. Oh yeah. And when you pull it out when it's flexible, you want to put it in between something like maybe some plywood. So that's what I'm going to use here. I got some plywood and then a board to kind of, basically I'm going to do it like that and then clamp down on this board so that it isn't just pushing on the middle of the plywood. It's kind of spreading it out a little bit farther. Um, some other YouTuber I watched said if you don't, you know, if it doesn't come out perfectly flat the first time, you can just do it more times until you get exactly the flatness that you want. All right, I got some gloves on. Um, it's opened up a little bit, not a ton. Let's see how this goes. I don't want to burn it. I don't want to burn it. That's like 250 for. 12, 15 minutes. Oh yeah, see it's flexible. Alright, it's been 5-10 minutes. I think it cools off and becomes rigid in about one minute but no reason not to let it go a little extra long see how flat we got it uh that ain't bad you know they just the very very ends are definitely the trickiest parts so that's pretty good so that oven i used it's not really like oh the whole oven is 250 degrees it's like there's a spot on the bottom that's very, very hot. I think I need to make a diffuser or something. And so, anyway, so this part's burnt. And uh, if you try and glue that to itself or whatever, it's not going to glue good. These parts are pretty good. 
cutting her in half here. That's going to be what I'm going to glue together. And then I'll have something instead of being a quarter inch, it'll be a half inch thick. And so that should be pretty good. You can see right there, you're going to have to like clamp things. All right, I'm going to glue these two pieces here. I made some marks so I know the orientation that I want. I'm using PVC primer, PVC cement. It's not really a glue. It's it, like it melts the top layer of the PVC. So, and then the PVC supposedly like becomes like one piece afterwards. But uh, it doesn't fill gaps good. I think there is a brand that will fill gaps, but you want it, you know, you want a nice clean contact area. Get some primer on here just because we want to give ourselves the best chance of getting stuff right. Primer is purple because certain plumbing jobs require primer by code. And so you want to be very easy, you, you know, you want the inspector to just take one look at your job and say, oh, I see, I see purple muck all over the place. They used primer. As an electrician, it's not required to use primer, so we never use primer. Only thing we use is just the cement. I think what it is, the primer is required for stuff that is pressurized. So like your like your water in your house. And boy, they give you this brush. I mean there's no way to lay it on but super duper thick, but I guess they know what they're doing. all over the place makes everything purple okay we got lots of clamps Clamping down my double layer PVC. I got a piece of wood below it. Can't see it there. Uh, I'm going to use a one of my trusty Harbor Freight hole saws. It's two and a quarter inch, and the pilot bit is a quarter inch. That's standard, and quarter inch works real good for stuff. So that we can chuck it up in the drill press like it's a lathe. You grab yourself a quarter twenty bolt that has enough threads and a couple nuts. So just run that sucker through there and then tighten it down. I just learned today. I've made myself learn. So if you turn this thing clockwise is tight. If you turn the top part of the chuck, counterclockwise is tight. So this one is the way you'd think it is, this one's the opposite. I've had good luck with the Dremel doing this with the carbide tip, but the last one kind of messed it up. So hopefully I can show a successful one here by using a file. And I'm going to mark it with a pen so I can see where I've cut into it. On the left is a pulley I kind of messed up with the Dremel. 
Here's one I did with the file only. Um, you can see it's not, let's see where, right here. That ain't perfect. And the reason why that is, is I, it took me multiple passes with the hole saw. You go in and out, in and out, in and out, and it makes the center hole get out of round. So you have to do it in one pass only. And then here's one that I did another time, and uh, it came out pretty good. And I think, you know, they'd all work depending on your application. So these have a quarter inch hole in them. So you can put a quarter 20 bolt through them and attach them to whatever you want. And this one, I drilled it out slightly and put in, uh, I think it's some 1 8 inch copper tubing. Now copper tubing is a little too small for the quarter 20 to go through. So I took a quarter inch drill bit and drilled out the copper part. Anyway, so I got a, a copper insert here. And so that part will last longer. Again, depending on your application, you may or may not need that. So now, what kind of rope or stringer are you going to use with it? Now, if you use thin string, like the thinner the string is, the more it's going to cut into the pulley instead of making the pulley spin correctly. So, you know, this kind of construction twine string is going to be probably too small to work with this stuff. Now, I think if you had like some baling twine, that would work pretty good. I don't think that's going to cut into it too much. Basically, if you get the biggest, that might be too big, but the biggest you can find that still fits in there, it's not going to cut down into the bottom of the groove. It's going to, it's going to rest equally into all of it. So, let's see, like this one here, let's see. I think that would work. It's a little too big. So, something in between that and that would be perfect. Alright, let's take a look at a couple of garage sale pulleys I have. I have this little metal one. It has like a brass wheel part. That's kind of cool. Got this guy that's not small. I think those wheels are probably about 12 inches each. And let's talk about the physics of pulleys and uh, the cost of them on Amazon. A pulley is like a lever where the radius, the center point to the edge point, is the length of the lever. So if you've got a big pulley, with a big radius, then it's like having a big lever. It's something that really wants to turn your pulley around. And you want your pulley to turn. That's, what, that's how the rope doesn't cut a groove in it. Now if you've got a small pulley, then you have a small radius, which is like a small lever. And so it, it's not very good at turning the pulley. A lot of times the pulley will just stay there and not turn, and your string will just go past it. Which, with a metal one, it's not that big a deal, but with these, it's going to cut a groove in them. And so I want to talk about Amazon prices. So this pulley is a decent size one, and it's stainless steel, so you know, that's probably like a $15, $20 pulley. This whole operation started when I was looking at Amazon pulleys. They have some real small ones, and they're like 10 of them for 16 bucks. And they all have bad reviews. Well, some people are like, these things are great. And, you know, they didn't try. They didn't work them very hard. But a whole bunch of the reviews are like, you pull on the string and the wheel doesn't turn. And the reason why is because they have such a small little pulley wheel. And so I was like, I want, you know, I want something that has like a two-inch pulley wheel. And then now you're talking, you know, you're talking 35 bucks for each sucker. So that's, that's what happened. All right, I want to make uh, the other part of the pulley out of this strip of PVC, and I'm going to bend it around the pulley, but I don't want it to be tight against it, so I'm going to add a washer here so that it'll just be a little bit thicker than it has, uh, a little bit thicker. Using boiling water didn't work good. It's not hot enough, so I'm going to use a torch to fix this thing. Using boiling water didn't work that good, so I'm going to use a torch. And I'm going to clamp it with the washer in there so I get the exact spacing I want on that end. And I just got to fix that top end to match it. I opened it up a little bit so that 
it actually wants to open instead of clamp down. So I think more open is better, really. And now I'm going to put uh, a hole in it. Throw a bolt in there. I got a lock nut, so it'll stay where we want it. I think I should have clamped this all together. Holding it by hand was not, not strong enough. But there we go. You can run a string on that, and it keeps going. I think that's a good sign. I'm sure your tenth one will look a heck of a lot better than your first one. Actually, my second one. This is my second one. It's the worst <laughs> out of the two. Normally, a pulley has a swivel on the top, and you can make one out of metal or whatever. But usually, it doesn't have to like spin around and around and around and around. It just has to, you know, if it can do 360 degrees, that's fine. But if you just put a string on there, that'll work. And if you wind it up too much, you may have to unwind it. All right, here's a little test organizer thing I did um, out of the thin PVC. It looks like I got two of them held water, one of them leaks water slowly, and the other one leaks water real fast. You can see there's a hole in that one, so you would know before you even put it together that that one wasn't going to work. So I would say that one doesn't count. So basically two out of three held water, and then one out of three didn't, and you know you couldn't tell the you couldn't tell before which one of the three wouldn't hold water. And that other one with the crack doesn't count. All right, it's been like an hour, so again, this one doesn't count, but it's one out of three, and one of them just has a real slow leak. So I'm gonna try and work on that and figure out how to get that to seal, because you might want it, I don't know, maybe you want to make your own cup, put beer in it or something. Welcome to Off Grid Oregon. On this channel, we do semi manly stuff like turning PVC pipe into PVC boards. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.